Hi guys, in this video, I will explain the optimum longitudinal force distribution at the CG part 5. Uh, the contents are uh, the quiz, the optimal front and the rear acceleration and the brake force distribution. And I will explain what are the theoretical base for the curves. Uh, for example, Excel sheet for both of optimum front and rear force, a slope of force distribution curve at zero, a constant friction coefficient mu line at acceleration, a constant friction coefficient mu line at braking, and then I will give you the answer to the quiz and then conclusion. As usual, I prepared the quiz for you. Uh, which of the following statements are true? All the cars uh, have the same weight. Uh, the quantity of weight transfer uh, gets bigger. As CG height uh, gets higher uh, with, the, with the same wheel base. The quantity of weight transfer gets bigger. As the CG height uh, gets lower uh, with the same wheel base. Here we have the beautiful graph for automotive engineers. X-axis stands for longitudinal force of front wheels, and the Y-axis stands for the longitudinal force of rear wheels. A car has the dimension data of CG as shown as here. Uh, this graph shows all the possible forces generated by front and rear axle. Uh, blue dots are describing the optimal longitudinal front rear force distribution. Here, uh, let's focus on the first quadrant, uh, which shows the acceleration force uh, distribution. The green line here that means the constant acceleration line, every point on which has the same acceleration value. In the other words, in other words, uh, the total sum of front and rear wheel forces are the same at every point on the green line. Uh, thin gray, thin gray lines here, you can see here in the first quadrant. And also you can see here the thin gray lines. Uh, describes the constant rear wheel friction coefficient lines uh, or the constant front wheel friction coefficient lines. Uh, red dots are F sub XL axis intercept of rear wheel uh, friction coefficient mu line. Here. And the X of XF axis intercepts of front wheel friction coefficient mu line here. And finally, the red line shows the slope of the curve at zero here. Now this value is the 0 0.667 in this example. How can I know that? I will explain. In this graph, uh, let's focus on the first quadrant, uh, which shows the optimal front rear brake force distribution in the similar way uh, to the acceleration graph in the previous slide. We have the constant mu lines of front wheels here. and the constant mu lines of rear wheels here. And thin gray color. Uh, the constant deceleration lines of green lines here. And the rear wheel force axis intercept here. As shown as a red dots here, a red dots and their values here. 
and the front wheel forces axis intercepts here in the red color and their values here and finally slope at zero is 0 0.667 uh, which is the ratio of l sub f to l sub r Uh, let's make an Excel sheet to make both of the optimal front and the rear force distribution curve. All we need are geometry data for optimal longitudinal force distribution curve. No data is required uh, for the quantity of the uh, car weight. In the first step, uh, put the data of wheelbase L, CG height H, and L sub F and L sub R in the Excel sheet. In the second step, calculate the ratio of A to G, uh, making equation 7 and equation 8 0 uh, to find the limit of a longitudinal motion. Uh, here, uh, the tilting acceleration is 3.86 and tilting deceleration is minus 2.57. Uh, you can find the way of calculation for these values in part 2 video. In the second, uh, third step, uh, set the interval between each datum of a uh, ratio of A to G, uh, which is 0.1 in this example. In the fourth step, uh, draw the graph uh, by the Excel uh, for the uh, front axle forces versus rear axle forces. X axis is for uh, front wheel forces y-axis is for rear wheel forces. Here we have the way to calculate the slope of longitudinal force distribution at zero. There are two equations of front wheel and the rear wheel forces. Uh, let's calculate the uh, limit value uh, when the acceleration a approaches to zero uh, for the equation of the uh, rear wheel force divided by front wheel force here. Uh, then the equation uh, boils down to the uh, ratio of L sub F to L sub R, uh, which is 0 0.667. Uh, this slide explains how to get the constant friction coefficient to mu line intercept at acceleration. When the car accelerates, at A, uh, we have equation D1. Horizontal force is proportional to the vertical force. Therefore, we have equation 2 for front wheel. And we have equation D3 for the rear wheel. Uh, vertical forces at the front and the rear wheels can be expressed as Equation D4 for front wheel and equation D5 for rear wheel. Uh, using the equations of D2, D3, D4, and D5, we have two equations. Equation D6 for a uh, front wheel and equation D7 for rear wheel. Uh, please refer to the part 2 video for the derivation of these equations. Uh, when the front drive only, in the equation D1, F sub XR is equal to zero. Then we have the equation D8. Uh, from D6 and D8, we can calculate the acceleration ratio of A sub F to G is equal to equation D9. Uh, this is the intercept of front force axis. Uh, so when a rear wheel drive only, in the similar way, in the equation of D1, F sub XF is equal to zero. Then we have the equation D10. From D10, and the 7, 
we can calculate the acceleration, the ratio of a sub r to g, uh, which is the equation d11. And this is the intercept of a rear wheel force axis. Uh, let's derive the constant friction coefficient mu line equation in acceleration uh, using the intercepts obtained in the previous slide uh, by the equation d9 and the e equation d11. Uh, let's start with calculating the intercept values, substituting the car data for corresponding variables of two equations uh, from the equation d9 of front axle we have intercept values here. And from the equation D11 of real axle, we have intercept values here. The constant mu line is simply the equation of a straight line of the typical equation. Y is equal to Cx plus D. C is a slope, D is an intercept. Refer to the graphs we had in the previous slide, it's easy to derive the constant friction coefficient mu line equation. Per the constant mu line of rear wheels, we can find the slope here and the intercept in the graph of the previous slide. Similarly, uh, for the constant mu lines of front wheels, we can find the slope here and the intercept in the graph of the previous slide. This slide explains how to get the constant friction coefficient mu line intercept in braking. When a car decelerates at A, we can get the equation E1. Horizontal force is proportional to the vertical force. Uh, therefore, we have two equations, E2 for uh, front wheel, E3 for rear wheel. Uh, vertical forces at the front and the rear wheels are E4 for a front wheel, E5 for rear wheel. Therefore, using the equations of E2, E3, E4, and E5, we have two equations, E6 for a front horizontal force, E7 for rear uh, horizontal rear force. When we have a front brake only, 2 times F sub XR is equal to 0. Uh, therefore, we can get equation E8 from E6 and E8. Deceleration G unit can be expressed as equation E9. Uh, this is the intercept of uh, front force axis. So when we have a rear brake only uh, from equation 1, 2 times F sub XF is equal to 0. Then we can get the equation E10. Uh, from E7 and E10, here, a deceleration G unit can be expressed as the equation E11. Uh, this is the intercept of rear force axis. Uh, let's derive the constant friction coefficient mu line equation in the braking uh, using the intercepts obtained in the previous slide uh, by the equation E9 and the equation E11. Uh, let's start with calculating the intercept values, substituting the car data uh, for corresponding variables of two equations. Uh, from the equation E9 of front axle, we have the intercept values here. Uh, from the equation E11 of rear wheel, we have the intercept values here. A constant mu line is simply the equation of a straight line of the typical equation y is equal to cx plus d. c is slope and d is intercept. Uh, referring to the graphs we had in the previous slide, 
it's easy to derive the constant friction coefficient mu line equation. Uh, for the constant mu lines of real wheels, we can find the slope and the intercept in the previous slide. In the graph of the previous slide, uh, similarly, for the constant mu lines of front wheels, we can find the slope here and the intercept here in the graph of the previous slide. Uh, let's find the answer to the quiz. Which of the following statements are true? The answer is number one. The quantity of weight transfer gets bigger as CG height gets higher with the same wheel base. Here we have the conclusion. A tilting acceleration gets bigger as the CG height gets lower and gets closer to the front axle. Tilting acceleration gets bigger as the CG height gets lower and gets closer to the rear axle. Finally, constant friction coefficients can be described as the straight line in the optimum distribution of the front and the rear wheel forces. You can easily understand this video if you watch my previous video. Presently, I explained the EVD and the optimum longitudinal force distribution, including EVD logic. Uh, that is the part 1 video of the optimum longitudinal force distribution. And I explain the optimum acceleration and the braking force distribution curves and their mechanical properties. And also, I explained in detail how to make the graph using Excel sheet. And also, I explained the importance of lowering CG height with a practical example in part 3. A lowering CG height is the only way to improve both of acceleration and the braking performances. And you can find the explanation on the variation of optimal longitudinal forces distribution for different CGs. The next video will be the optimum longitudinal force distribution part 6 which is including uh, the explanation on variation of optimum curves due to CG location and practical example with Excel. See you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.